Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and we are going to be returning back to the Emerald Tablets today. We are on the Emerald Tablet 11, the key to above and below. And I believe we only have about 15 tablets, so we are getting towards the end of this subject matter. Of course, I have thoroughly enjoyed the Emerald Tablets they i i you know as most of you guys know i i read this for you guys for the first time here on on this show and so i'm kind of learning this with you guys and as many of you do know i'm a huge student of the law of one and a lot of what the emerald tablets have said make perfect sense to me and are definitely mirrored in the teachings of the law of one of course thoth has done an amazing job of of writing about the macro and the micro and of course everything always really whittles down to the micro to our own work to our own understanding as i've said so many times before nobody nobody can ascend for you you have to do that yourself and that is definitely what thought has been teaching here in these emerald tablets and so um before we get into this reading i just want to ask you guys that are watching that have been following along since the very beginning what your favorite lesson has been in this um in this study of the emerald tablets let me know down in the comment section below of course uh I always drop my Emerald Tablet readings uh, a couple of hours early. I usually drop my I usually drop my morning videos at ten o'clock Eastern Time, but I always drop these videos around eight o'clock in the morning Eastern Time on Mondays because, as most of you know, on Mondays at ten a.m. Eastern Time, I go on with Shanti and Mornay over on Aquarius Rising Africa, where we read through this again and we have a live discussion about the material. It's one of my favorite things to do because obviously more heads, multiple heads are better than one. And so many different people are able to give you, etherically you, the group you, you watching me, a different perspective on the same material. And that's always really important to be able to see these different perspectives on the same material to enhance and deepen our own understanding of the complexity of truth. And so if you are watching us at eight o'clock in the morning and you want to join us for um, the live show at 10 a.m. over on Aquarius Rising Africa, I will place a link to their channel down in the description box below. I would love for you guys to join in live because you will be able to interact in the comments section. Again, that is 10 a.m. Eastern time. So if you're looking at your iPhone, that's New York City time, Eastern time. I believe that's like six o'clock in the evening or maybe a little bit earlier in South Africa, I'm not 100% sure, but please just check your world clocks on your phones to figure out what time that is for you. If this is also your first time joining us, I'm really happy that you're here. I will put down in the description box below all of our past readings and past deep dives into the Emerald Tablets and Atlantis and Thoth and all that stuff so that after you're done listening to this reading, um, you can go and listen to past readings to hear the different tablets. I, As always, I suggest that you get your own copy of the Emerald Tablets. I am using Doriel's translation. And the reason why I picked Doriel's translation, well, first of all, it came recommended to me by my friend Cindy here in Atlanta, who's on the channel from time to time. And it also seems to be the most commonly used translation and commentary by a lot of scholars. So in order to kind of keep with the uh, keep with the with the with the normalcy of, of going through the Emerald Tablets, I decided to stick with Doriel's translation. With that being said, though, there are a lot of commentaries and translations out there and for your own personal library if you're someone like me i would i would suggest getting multiple translations um i just feel like you know again the more perspectives the better we just can't we just don't have time to go through everybody's translations on a show so that's why i picked doriel but please don't censor yourself from other people's works as well because other people's works are just as important as well as your own perspective now if money is tight for you uh you can find free pdfs of the emerald tablets online you might not be able to get the commentaries for free but you can get the the just the, the basic tablets totally free online okay so there's pdfs you can just google just put in your google bar 
Emerald Tablet 11, the key to above and below, and you should get a PDF popping up that you can just read straight from the computer or print it off totally for free. And I, you know, your own opinion over the material is what's the most important anyway. So, so yeah, I, I absolutely 100% recommend everybody having it in all things, having their own resources and their own access to information. I, as I say all the time, please do your own research. Please come up with your own conclusions. I'm just here to discuss things with you. I'm not here to tell you what to think or what to believe. All right. So, so absolutely get your own, your own resources. All right. Let's get started with the Emerald Tablet 11, the key to above and below. So we're going to start, we're going to read through what uh, Thoth says, and then we're going to go back and look at Doriel's commentary and translation. Hark ye and list ye, O children of Chem, to the words that I give that shall bring ye to light. Ye know, O men, that I knew your fathers, I your fathers in a long time ago. Deathless have I been through all the ages, live among ye since your knowledge began. Leading ye upward to the light of the great soul, ever have I striven, drawing ye out from the darkness of night. And so this first verse is kind of reflecting back to the very first ver verse of the very first tablet. And I'll just go ahead and read that for you guys, just to remind you guys um, what the very first verse says. He says, I thought, so again, this is the first verse from Enmal Tablet 1, the history of Thoth the Atlantean. I thought the Atlantean. Master of mysteries, keeper of records, mighty king, magician, living from generation to generation, being about to pass into the halls of Amente, set down for the guidance for those who are to come after these records of the mighty wisdom of Atlantis. And so he's telling you that, that that's very much mirroring the first verse of this tablet 11. So again, when he says those are who, who are to come after, he's talking about us in 2023. And so let's reread that verse again, where he says, Hark ye and listen, O children of Chem. And so Chem, what is Chem? Well, we learned in the beginning, if you're new, we learned in the beginning that Chem, the land of Chem, is Egypt. So Chem is where we get the word chemistry today. And so this is referring to the land of Chem, the land of Egypt, the land of alchemical alchemy, the magic of being human. So really this, I'm not, we're not talking about some sorcery where you're literally turning lead to gold. All of this is a, a micro um, look in the inner workings of man. You are the alchemy. You are the, per the alchemist. You are the person that can transmute your own energy from lead to gold, all right? Figuratively speaking, right? You are the person that has to do that. You are the person that has to free your own self from your own bondage, the bondage of thought, the bondage that keeps you stuck in a rut, right? Um, this is very much things that we are in, in this generation. We're very familiar with how our thoughts affect us Right. So when he says in the first tablet that he's writing this for us, the people to come after, he's absolutely talking about us right now in 2023. He's not talking about our ancestors in the 1800s or 1700s. He's talking about us because we already have this baseline understanding that that we are we are the alchemists. We are responsible for our own happiness. We are responsible for fixing ourselves, for ascending ourselves. Nobody's going to come do it for you. No one can do it for you. No one can do it for you because nobody else can be within your own body, within your own mind, and within your own consciousness. Only you are in that, that consciousness. So therefore, you have to be the one to do it yourself, right? People can come in and be your teacher. I teach. I'm a teacher. I can give you the information. I can give you, show you the tools, but I can't do it for you, right? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And so he's saying like these, you are the children of the camp. We are all descendants of Egypt, all of us. And so if you are, if you are new to this, you might think that's strange for me as a very white person to say that I am in a, a descendant of Egypt, but this also goes back to the theory of Atlantis. And so in order to really appreciate what he's saying here, you have to get rid of all the bullshit you were taught in school. Basically you have to unlearn your own history, Egypt, land of Kim, 
This was the descendants, the ones left after the fall of Atlantis. Everybody on this earth right now is a descendant of the people that were left after the fall of Atlantis. All of our races, so white people, black people, Asian people, Latin people, all of our races come from Atlantis because the Atlanteans knew that the color of somebody's skin had nothing to do with where they were from geographically on the planet okay so this theory states that i am not white because my ancestors were from northern europe if you are black and watching this this theory states that you are not black because your ancestors are from africa your race comes from the genetic dominance of your cosm uh, your your uh, cosmology your galactic inheritance all right and that is what makes earth so powerful as so uh, i spoke about with eric and angie and i've spoken about multiple times in this channel but we talked about this yesterday on our video that um the 10 missing tribes of israel are not literal tribes it's your 10 strands of dna that are dormant we have 12 strands of dna hello that's the 12 tribes of israel y'all the two DNA strands that are active are there and active, but then you have 10 that are dormant. Now, science, modern day science, will call that junk DNA. It's not junk. God don't make junk. So all of us collectively on this planet, all of us who are descendants of Egypt, a.k.a. the land of Kim, a.k.a. Atlantis, are all carrying genetic, a genetic hodgepodge of all these galactic beings that is why the people the the humanoids the earthlings us earthlings are literally the most powerful in the galaxy we just don't know we're the most powerful because we possess everything that they all possess separately we possess in the whole and so like someone like me who's white you could say that i my genetic dominance is like lyran or Palladian or Arcturian, where um, somebody who was from Africa might also have Lyran, Palladian, and Arcturian in them, but more dominantly has Sirius, right? The, the gal galaxy of Sirius, they're more dominant in that. And so the people of, of, of Atlantis knew this. They, they very much knew this. And so there was no such thing as like racism because they knew that your whatever you appear to be genetically was where you were dominant doesn't mean that i don't have serious dna in me as well it just means it's not as as active or as dominant as other dna strands and so all these different galactic places of galactic heritage have different strengths right let's look at it like let's take eye color for example so i have blue eyes if you are watching right now and you have brown eyes here's something that's interesting because I have blue eyes, I can see better in snow. Now, I don't live in a place where it snows, but I technically can see better in the snow than someone who has dark eyes, right? So if you have a group of people, the people who are blue eyed are not going to be as susceptible to snow blindness as people with brown eyes. And sometimes it's just as simple as that. And if you work together, but the person with the brown eye dominance will have other abilities and talents that I won't have. Now, this is just a minor, minor example, like a very minor example. When we look at the greater examples, we're looking at more of a, a galactic or more of a mystical heritage, right? So so, so that's just a basic example. So the Atlanteans knew this and they, they knew how to work together. And if you go back to the beginning of the emerald tablets he talks about how all these different tribes meaning these different galactics did separate themselves for a while so that the people that carry that heritage could really work on it together so that when they came together as the big group the big whole they would have they, they would be a very strong force of of a planet right everybody knew what they could do they could work together they could really be strong together as a team it's like it's like in a sporting event right people if you're you know if you're i'm not really big into sports but let's say you're a soccer player if you're the person who's the goalie you're going to train differently than somebody who's like running up and down the field kicking the ball there's gonna be different trainings involved yeah but they're both part of the same team and so that's kind of what they did with atlantis and then when atlantis fell it all got screwed up and we forgot this heritage and we forgot that we that 
we are really brothers and sisters of this planet and how special and powerful each of us are. And so the bad guys, the negative forces came in and got to kind of mess with their minds and cause division among us who are different versus unity. And so he's saying that you reading your ear. So that's what he's saying. You watching right now or reading right now, you are the person who is supposed to re-remember to re-remember, wake up to the truth of who you are. You are a child of Egypt. And if you go back and look at Egyptian hieroglyphics, you see people of all races in the hieroglyphics. It's not just black people. It's people with red hair. It's people with blonde hair. All within these hieroglyphics because they were all Egyptian. If you've been on this channel long enough, you know I always say, where are the blue people? There were blue people in the hieroglyphics. And my friend Angie found some blue people. I will put that video down in the description box below as well. But he's saying that it's like it's like a calling together of all the people around the planet to say, wake up. Come on. You guys are all, you're all descendants of Atlantis. You're all descendants, therefore, of Egypt. And again, Atlantis was the whole globe. There wasn't just one area of the globe that it, it was Atlantis. It was the whole globe. And then after Atlantis fell, the remaining people got left in Egypt, which is debatable whether that is actually in Africa. There's a lot of evidence to prove the real age Egypt was here in the United States. That's a, that's a topic for a different day. But you were all you were that is your inheritance every single person on this planet whether you're white black asian blue whatever you're all your inheritance is egypt because you are egyptian all right so and he's saying i knew uh, your father so i knew he's that can be taken in, in two ways right so he goes hear ye enlist ye o children of kim to the words that i give that shall bring ye to light. Ye know, O men, that I knew your fathers, I your fathers a long time ago. So this can be taken in two ways. He's been around. He's saying you are a descendant of, again, reiterating this point, that you are a descendant of Egypt. Yes, you, if you are a white person watching this, you are a descendant of Egypt as well. We all are. Egypt is the motherland for all of us, okay? But... He, this can also be taken as he's watched you reincarnate over and over and over again through the many lives that you have lived up into this point in this chain of reawakening to what was lost in your memory in that flood. So let's read that first verse again. List. Hear ye and list ye, O children of Chem, to the words that I give that shall bring you to light. Know ye, O men, that I knew your fathers. I, your fathers, in a long time ago, deathless have I been through all the ages, living among ye, since your knowledge began, leading you upwards, the light of the great soul, have I ever striven, drawing ye out from the darkness of night. Know ye, O people, amongst whom I walk, that I thought have all, have all of the knowledge and all of the wisdom known to man since the ancient days." Keeper have I been of the secrets of the great race, holder of the key that leads into life. Bringer up have I been to ye, O my children, even from the darkness of the ancient of days. List ye now to the words of my wisdom, list ye now to the message I bring. Hear ye now the words I give thee, and ye shall be risen from the darkness to light. And I want to remind you guys, if you've been here since the beginning, you might remember this. But if you are new, in the um, first and second tablets, he speaks about the fall of Atlantis. And he himself, uh, with a couple other people, were spared the memory loss that everybody else that survived the fall of Atlantis had. Right. So he talks about that in the beginning, that they were hidden away when the flooding happened. And when they came out, the people that were left that were not killed were barbaric. They were like go, go went back to caveman days because they had forgotten everything in that fell swoop of that flood. All right. And so he's saying, like, I've been trying to wake you up for all these years to remind you that you are this powerful, powerful being. And I just feel like I need to say this in case there's somebody new watching here. We've talked about this before. Thoth himself has said in these tablets that he is not a god. 
He doesn't want to be praised as a God. He doesn't want to be treated as a God. He is just a teacher. So if there's anybody watching right now that's thinking all of this is satanic because somebody said Thoth was a God, that's not what Thoth said about himself. All right. And so if you're believing hearsay, I don't know what to tell you. Right. A lot of religions love, love to use hearsay as fact and propaganda, which propaganda ain't nothing but fake news. OK, so I would, again, highly suggest instead of taking what somebody told you as truth, do the research yourself. If somebody is telling you thought is demonic, ask them to show you the proof. Where is the proof? Ask them to show you in the Emerald Tablets where it says he's demonic. All right. We need, we got to stop. We got to stop this whole, you know, um, propaganda hearsay bullshit that humans tend to love. We, we need to have hardcore facts before we start to make judgments. Okay. Cause you're missing out when you make those hardcore judgments without re researching for yourself, you're closing your mind. And when you close your mind, you stop growing. And if you stop evolving and growing, you die. Right. It's, it's, there's a, this is a dead end. Okay, so, all right, let's keep going. Far in the past, when I came to thee, I found thee in the caves of rocks. He just said that, that the after Atlantis fell, all the people who were left ran and hid and started acting very barbaric again because they'd forgotten everything that they had learned over the course of history in Atlantis. Lifted I thee by my power and wisdom until thou didst, didst shine as men among men. I found thee without any knowing, only a little were ye raised beyond beast. We were like cavemen again. Fanned I ever the spark of thy consciousness until at last ye flamed as men. And again, as he's saying this, guys, he's not saying that he just blew like magic fairy dust into your psyche and you all of a sudden woke up. No, if you go back and read all the other tablets, what he did was he taught you he over and over and over again it's like when you have your kid at home and you're going through the flashcards over and over and over again so that they can do well on their test it's basically kind of like how i see thoughts over and over and over again teaching you so that you you figured it out you had that prativa moment that flash of illumination prativa is a sanskrit word that means flash of illumination you had that wake up like oh okay so when he says that he's not t saying that he like bippity boppity boo boom you you remember no he worked with you as a teacher so that you would be flamed as men you would have that power within yourself so do not twist his words there for all these fun fundamentalists who are watching this right now don't twist his words go back and read the other tablets so you know what he's saying here what he's actually saying here now shall i speak to the knowledge ancient beyond the thought of thy race know ye that we of the great race had and have knowledge that is more than man's wisdom we gained from the star-born races your star-born races wisdom and knowledge far beyond man down to us has descended master of wisdom right so he's still saying that those of us who still remember there's even more knowledge that we are working towards which that's what the cassiopeians say too knowledge is infinite infinite knowledge never ends you're never done learning if you ever think you're done learning then you're done living you're that's certain death right knowledge protects knowledge is power and knowledge is infinite all right as far beyond us i am from thee list ye now while i give you wisdom use it and free thy thou shalt be key word there use it and free thou shalt be so he's going to tell us his wisdom but in him telling us doesn't mean anything unless we actually apply it and integrate it into our own being know ye that in the pyramid i build are the keys that shall show ye the way into life. I draw ye a line from the great image I build to the apex of the pyramid built as a gateway. Draw ye another opposite in the same angle and direction. Dig ye and find that which I have hidden. There shall ye find the underground entrance, the secrets hidden before ye were men. I was listening to, um, I think it was Graham Hancock, like an old, like from the 90s, an old interview with Graham Hancock, who, of course, a lot of uh, mainstream scientists have basically like poo-pooed as a conspiracy theorist. But even I think I think he's got gained a lot of popularity now because more people know 
that we've been lied to so much that people are more willing to listen to people like Graham Hancock and Graham Hancock can back his research. He can absolutely back his research. A lot of Egyptologists now cannot back their re research. They, it's just speculation. And in this um, conversation, he spoke about the pyramids and how nobody takes Egyptologists seriously. Like even in the 90s, people would roll their eyes whenever an Egyptologist would come to speak because they're kind of a joke. Like everything they tell you is a lie. You know, it's kind of like um, one of my professors in college used to say that uh, you, you know, uh, you know, a used car, uh, used car salesmen are not good actors. Like people say, oh, used car salesmen, salesmen are just actors. They're not good actors. They're not good actors because, you know, they're lying. And that's the same with Egyptologists. Like you, you know, they're lying. It's, it's like a little kid, you know, like when your child does something bad and tries to make up a story as to why they didn't do the bad thing. It's, you know, they're lying. And so I'm um, same with mainstream media, right? You go and watch Fox or CNN and everybody nowadays knows that it's a joke because they're, you know, they're lying. And so Graham Hancock was saying that, like, people aren't stupid. The pyramids were not burial chambers. People aren't stupid. They know there's something else about these pyramids that were very, very magical. The law of one gets into the building of the pyramids. And I just want to say to people watching right now, too, who, again, might be fundamentalist, um, darkness cannot create anything. Let me say that again. Darkness cannot, cannot create anything. Darkness cannot create anything. That's science. Look at the practice of photosynthesis, pulling in of the light into the plants so the plants can create. Light is the only thing that can create. So if you're somebody who's on this vigilante, terror, violent phase where you just want to destroy, like you're bloodthirsty, to destroy anything that you believe has been used by the darkness, if you do that... If you go on that bloodthirsty, vigilante witch hunt, there's going to be nothing left because the, the light created everything. And the darkness can only mimic, try to mimic the light or steal from the light and invert it. So even pyramids, even people who believe pyramids are bad, honey, you're just falling for some Nazi propaganda. God created the pyramids. If you think that Lucifer can create, that darkness can create, then you are giving way too much credit to the bad guys. And that's scary that you're giving the bad guys that much credit and makes me wonder who, who your real God actually is if you're giving the bad guys that much credit. Lucifer can't create anything. That's why in Satanism and Luciferianism, they rely on on the, the worship of Yahweh, Yahweh is Moloch, that's in the missing books of the Bible, so Yahweh is not the creator God, Yahweh is another name from Moloch, so back in the day, there were priests of Yahweh, so these were the priests that would run the sacrifices and the rituals to Moloch, Moloch requires burnt virginal offerings, this is in the Bible, right, Vert burnt virginal offerings a virgin is a child burning is burning so moloch would cr would require basically child sacrifices why because lucifer can't create anything and so these satanic luciferian rituals involve the taking of innocent life because they want to give that purity of life back to the darkness, to Lucifer, because Lucifer can't create it on himself for himself. So the darkness, whatever you want to call that darkness, Lucifer, Satan, darkness, whatever, it, he can't create it. It can't create itself. And so it has to seal and take from that which is pure and good. Same thing with the pyramids. The pyramids were created for good, for good. Okay. If they've been used for bad, it's not the fault of the pyramids that they were used for bad. Literally everything in our world has been stolen and used for bad. And I don't know about you guys, but um, my God, the God that I worship, is a God of healing and mercy and grace. Lucifer, however, the God of darkness, is the God of witch hunts and violence, and he's bloodthirsty. The God that I believe in would never want anything destroyed. Instead, we heal it.
Same with ourselves. It's that, again, that alchemist. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transmuted and changed. You can't destroy it anyway. You might think you're destroying it in your self-righteous, narcissistic, vigilante, bloodthirsty witch hunt. But you're not destroying it because you're not God. You're not the creator. Energy can only be transmuted. So, if you're somebody that thinks that we need to be going on vigilante witch hunts, you're on the wrong fucking channel. And I hear that the Church of Satan is looking for a new member, so you might want to check them out because that's actually very satanic. Okay? So, again, the pyramids were not created for evil. We need to return them back to their original templates, the way God intended them to be. Tell ye I now of the mysteries of cycles that move in movements that are strange to the finite. For infinite they are beyond the knowledge of man. Know ye that there are nine of the cycles, I, nine above and fourteen below, moving in harmony to the place of joining that shall exist in the future of time. Know ye that the lords of cycles are units of consciousness sent from the others to unify this with the all. Who are the lords of cycles? The chakras. We go through this in the tablets, the prior tablets. The seven lords are the seven chakras that flow through all of us, that have information for us, places to dig within ourselves to create wisdom. All right. Highest are they of the consciousness of all the cycles working in harmony with the law. Know thee that in time all will be perfected, having none above and none below, but all one in the perfected infinite, a harmony of all and the oneness of all. Deep neath the earth's surface in the halls of Amente sit the seven, the lords of the cycles, I, and another, the lord from below. Yet know that yet thee that in infinity there is neither above nor below. Right, because without death there is no life. So once you get into that that area of evolution where you're out of this the some samskaric cycle of reincarnation and birth and rebirth, you go into a different consciousness altogether where there's nothing of existence because nothing is of of um of mora of, of mor mortality. It's all just immortality. And so because there's immortality, there's no time, there's no death in life. And um, when he talks here, again, I want to bring up the seven lords of cycles and the halls of Amenti deep beneath the earth's surface. Well, again, as I said earlier, Thoth has this great way of doing the macro and the micro. The macro is the mirror of the micro. And so the seven lords of cycles, what is your earth surface? Your earth surface is your body. That's your nature. The body and the earth both are property. They're both nature. They're, they're, they're both forms of Shakti. Shakti is the expression the natural expression of the soul. So the body, the soul will then shock, will Shakti will create the body for the experience. So anything in nature, be that your body, be it the planet, be it the trees is an expression is a, is a temporary expression of the more, the immortal soul. So again, when he's talking about going neat, the earth's surface of the halls of Amente could very well be a place on the earth, but more importantly, it's going within you. So he's talking about going within himself, seeing his chakra system, asking his chakra system what there is to teach him. The three lower chakras going into the hell, the pit of the body to go through those really dark shadow sides of ourselves to heal those shadow sides. What you resist will always persist. So if you struggle with anger, if you struggle with jealousy, if you struggle with betrayal, unless you actually pull that up and look at it and sit in it and be there and work through it, it's always going to be there. and It's going to get heavier and heavier and heavier. If you resist working on that side of yourself that's not so pretty, it's just going to persist and get heavier. And so pulling that up and working on it and figuring out why you have these sensations of, of thought and healing that thought is what then turns that lead to gold. It's what ascends you vibrationally up the chakra system, up Shashumna into the you know, ethereal. All right. So again, macro micro, let me start that verse over again. Deep neath earth's surface in the halls of Amente sit the seven lords, the lords of the cycles. I and another, the Lord from below Yet now the yet know thee that in infinity there is neither above nor below. So once you are out of your body, aka your body dies, you don't have 
the constraints of a, of any type of, of, of property of, of any nature, right? It's, it's, it's no more because the body, the nature is mortal where the soul is immortal. Yet know thee that infinity there is neither above nor below, but ever there is and ever shall be openness of all when all is complete. Oft have I journeyed to the halls of Amente. Oft have I stood there before the lords of all. Oft at at the fount of their wisdom have drunken and filled both my body and soul with their light. So he's done his own work. Many times he sat with himself. He sat with his own shit. He's looked at himself. He's tried to figure out where his own bondage is and his thought. Many times he's gone in there and explored, which it, it does take many. It, it, listen, listen, Linda, listen. If you're still alive, which if you're watching this, you're still alive, you still got work to do. The work, the shadow work never stops. If somebody tells you they've done their shadow work and they're done, they're lying. And they don't know what they're talking about. As long as you are in a human body, you are bound by that human body. As long as you are in a human body, you are bound by the nervous system of that body. As long as you are in a human body, you are bound by the laws of karma. Reaction, action, and reaction. Right? Friction. Opposing forces. Main opposing force, again, is that you are in a mortal body with an immortal soul. That's a huge opposing force. One part of you is going to die. The other part of you is going to live forever. That's going to cause some friction with those opposing forces. So if you are still alive, you still have work to do. I've been working on myself for 17 years. I'm not near done. I, will, I won't be done until I'm done, until I'm on my deathbed. Okay? So do not let people fool you and trick you into thinking they are somehow more enlightened than you. It's not true. It's not true. We're all here to human. As I say on this channel all the time, let's turn the, the noun human into a verb. If we take the noun human and turn it into a verb, in my opinion, it starts to make more sense. You came here to human. Just like a runner goes to a road race to run, you came here to human. You came to this earth to human. You're not going to show up at that road race unless you're planning on running that road race. You're not going to show up on planet Earth unless you're planning on humaning. Part of humaning is doing your shadow work your whole life. is Because that shadow work is how you refine your soul. He says it here. Oft at the front of their wisdom have drunken and filled both my body and soul with their light. When you work on the limitations of the body... The friction of the body, the friction the nervous system is providing you, you are then refining the soul. So things that you struggle with emotionally in this life are things that you agree to in your soul contract. Your soul contract is not about some whimsical role you're supposed to play for the greater good of humanity. We got to get out of our, because the ego is the false sense of self anyway. That's narcissism, right? And that's, that's the false sense of self. Look how great I am. Look how much better I am than, no, honey. Listen, Linda, no. Listen, death be not proud. You ever, uh, that's one of my favorite poems by John Donne, a very old poem. Death be not proud, though some have called thee. Thou art not so. Why? Because kings and paupers, as it says in that poem, kings and paupers are both slaves to death. No one gets out of this world alive. It doesn't matter. Yes, we all have certain jobs we're going to do in this world, but that is nothing compared to the work we do on ourselves. Your main points of your soul contract, are you refining your soul through going within yourself and working on yourself, working on that jealousy? Let's say in this life, like, okay, I'll use myself for an example. I've done this before. I struggle. You've been on this channel for a while. You know, I struggle with anxiety, major anxiety. I have major anxiety disorders. I've been diagnosed with CPTSD, which is complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Yes, I could sit here and say I'm a victim because I have been abused. I've been through incredible abuse. I had a very abusive childhood. So I now have CPTSD because of that. However, I could be the victim of that. And I could sit here and pout and say, it's not fair. It's not fair that I have all this trauma. Or I can sit here and say, oh, okay, yeah, it wasn't right what they did to me. It wasn't right what my school did to me. It wasn't right 
what my school did to other people. And I can see the karma of that because now the school I went to is facing a lot of lawsuits. And some of the teachers I had are now in federal prison because there, there, so there was karma. There was an action and a reaction taken. But for me, I can't be the victim of that because I need to take that CPTSD, that anxiety, and now I need to work through it because that's going to help me refine my soul. That's not giving the abusers, that's not letting them off the hook, but it's me taking my power back by saying, okay, my soul asked to work through anxiety in a human body so that I could refine something about myself. And so that's what I'm going to do. Instead of being a victim, I'm going to walk around and say, okay, I'm going to be the alchemist. This shitty anxiety, I'm going to work through it. I'm going to work through it and I'm going to go through trauma therapy and I'm going to do a shit ton of yoga and I'm going to do meditation. And I'm going to journal and I'm going to constantly be working on myself and refining myself because now that I have the anxiety, I actually have some resistance that I can work with. It's like resistant training. Yeah. You know, it's like when you go, remember, I mean, I'm assuming spin classes are still big. I did spinning for a while right out of high school when I was going into college and I was still doing a lot of running, I did a lot of spin classes. And I remember taking these spin classes and you would have to up the resistance on the on the bike, right? To make it harder. And then you could lower it and, and up it, uh, lower and up it, depending on what, what kind of resistance you need. Same thing with our emotional life. That resistance, so that ugliness, the anxiety, the jealousy, the betrayal trauma, the, you know, the fear of the future, the uh, the scarce mentality, all of that is resistance for you to have something to work with. If you didn't have resistance, you would have nothing to work with, nothing to actually strike the match, right? The friction that is needed, the heat that is needed. I've, I've used this example before. I'll use it again. It's like a match. When you look at one singular match, it has everything on that match to create a fire. But that fire cannot be created unless that match is struck up against the matchbook. That striking of the match on the matchbook creates friction. And that friction, I bet you anything, that match is not comfortable when it's being rubbed up against that matchbook. But that friction is what allows that match to, to give light, to have light, to take everything within that match and use it to create that light. But that, again, that light cannot be created unless that friction is there. So everything you've been through in this life, I'm not saying it was right. I'm not saying your abuser should get off the hook. They shouldn't. And their karma will come. But your karma, your action and reaction, remember, there's no such thing as good or bad karma. That's something that Westerners get real wrong. Karma is just karma. It's just Everything has an, it, it's the law, like, right? Like every, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That's karma. That's karma. It's just cause and effect. And karma itself is neither good nor, nor bad. It's your perception. It's your attachment, your nervous system attachment to the cause and effect that in your mind creates it as good or bad. So therefore, if your mind is creating it as such, you then have the power to transmute that and use it as your resistance. Okay, so anything you've been through in your life that's caused you, like myself, to have like CPTSD or caused you to have something, it totally sucks. And the abuser is going to have to face their own justice. However, you have the power. You can either be a victim and sulk and let that lead, that heaviness, get heavier and heavier and heavier and persist, persist, persist because you've resisted or, or you can take your power back and you can complete your soul contract by saying, ah, okay, that really sucks what happened to me. And now I have all this anxiety because of it. And I'm probably going to struggle with the anxiety for the good part of my life, but I can still, because of this, I, 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 I still have this way of like creating that light, striking that match. I can take this, this anxiety and I can actually use it as resistance and use it as something to work with. I can take this and work with it because without it, I wouldn't have that friction without it. I wouldn't have that matchbook to strike my match. So I can see this as an opportunity to refine myself, to refine my soul. 
You know, there's that great saying that hurt people hurt other people. That's totally true. People who have been hurt in this life and haven't healed will go on to continue to hurt other people. But I just shared this on Instagram the other day. Somebody posted, hurt people hurt people, but healed people heal people. It's your choice. The choice is yours. No one gets out of this world alive. Every single person has their own crosses to bear. Every single person on this earth, all 7 billion of us are going to go through some form of trauma. We're going to go through some dark nights of the soul. It's what we do with it that matters. That's your soul contract. Not being the queen of this or the ruler of that or not this or that or being in the history books. That's not your fucking soul contract. That's just the experience. That's just the ride. Who cares? Your soul contract is you being the alchemist. You taking this lead and learning how to transmute it to gold within yourself. All right, let's get back to the reading. I'm going to read that verse again. Deep neath earth's surface in the halls of Amente sit the seven lords, the lords of the cycles, I and other, the lord from below. Know Yet know thee that in infinity there is neither above nor below. Yet ever there is and ever shall be oneness of all when all is complete. Oft have I journeyed to the halls of Amente. Oft have I stood before the lords of the all. Oft at the fount of their wisdom have drunken and filled both my body and soul with their light. Spake thee to me and told me of cycles and the law that gives them the means to exist. I spake to me the lords of the nine saying, O thought, Great are ye among earth's children, but mysteries exist of which ye know not. Ye know that ye come from the space-time below this, and know ye shall travel to the space-time beyond. But little ye know of the mysteries within them, little ye know of the wisdom beyond. Know ye that ye as a whole of this consciousness are only a cell in the process of growth, growth evolution you don't evolve you die the consciousness below thee is ever expanding in different ways from those known to thee i it though in space time below thee is ever growing in ways that are different from those that were part of the ways of thine own for know that it is grown as a result of thy growth for know that it is grown as a result of thy growth but not in the same way that thou didst grow. The growth that thou had have in the present have brought into being a cause and effect. Karma, right? And when he's saying that you're not aware of some of the growth, that's totally true. A lot of the lessons we're learning, we're not even totally aware we're learning them. My teacher in India says that you practice yoga every seven lifetimes. That says to me that the one lifetime you are so devoted to your practice of self understanding and self-awareness not yoga practice it takes seven lifetimes after that for all those lessons to, to fully integrate into your consciousness right and so he's saying the growth is not you're not aware of everything you're doing so every time for those of you who are doing your shadow work and you feel like you're not getting anywhere you are getting you, you're just not aware of the subtle changes that are happening within you over time and the way that it changes your DNA, the way that it changes your perspective on everything, the way that it changed the vibratory results of your even your own family. These are so subtle, but you're not aware of them half the time, right? And your growth in this world, in this life, is what's, do, is, is what's spawned by cause and effect, which is karma, what we were just talking about. No consciousness follows the path of those before it, else all would be repetition in vain, right? So we have to grow. We, we can't just stand still because it would be in repetition. We have to move forward. Earth's consciousness is a cycle. It exists and follows its own path to the ultimate goal. Each plays its part in the plan of the cosmos. Each plays its part in the ultimate end. The farther the cycle, the greater its knowledge, the ability to blend the law of the whole. So collectively, we're all a part of this. This definitely mirrors the law of one. The earth itself is its own consciousness. And us being earthlings are part of that consciousness of Mother Earth. Know ye that ye are in the cycle below us, are working the minor parts of the law. 
while we of the cycle that extends to infinity take the striving and build greater law. So yeah, that again is the law of one. There's different densities. We're in third density. Next step is fourth density. Next step is fifth density. Next step is sixth density. Every density you rise up, your consciousness is going to understand even more, a deeper capacity. Third density is not the density of knowing. It's not the density of knowing. So if somebody is acting like a know-it-all in third density, whew, they are dead wrong because third density is not the density of knowing. It's the density of making choices. Each has its own part to play in the cycles. Each has his work to complete in his way. Let me read that again. Each has his work to complete in his way. That Back to that cause and effect, that friction, that karma. The cycle below thee is yet not known below thee, but only formed for a need that exists. For know ye that the fountain of wisdom sends forth the cycles, is internally seeking new powers to gain. Ye know that knowledge is gained only by practice, and wisdom comes forth only from knowledge. And thus are the cycles created by law. Means are they for gaining of knowledge, for the plane of law that is the source of all. The cycle below is not truly below, but only different in space and time. The consciousness there is working and testing lesser things than those ye are. And know, just as ye are working on greater, as above ye are those are also working as ye are not yet other laws the difference that exists between the cycles is only the ability to work with the law different densities different awarenesses of consciousness again as they were just saying as we've said in that whole thing knowledge is is infinite there's no end to learning so don't don't even freak out about trying to learn everything in this life you're again you're not even in the density of knowing so that's a fool's errand right this is the density of making choices. Going back to what are these choices? Well, law of one says service to others, service to self. How do you service others? You heal yourself and then you share those teachings with other people to help them heal themselves, right? Your choice. You can either take your trauma and be the victim and sulk and be vigilante and violence and want to attack and not live by law and order like most people in the truth or community are absolutely going negative because they're vigilante assholes who want to hurt people. Or you can take everything you've experienced in this timeline, everything you've experienced in your own personal life and use it to better yourself, to make yourself a better human being, to work on your own reactions, to work on your own perception of life, to find peace in the now, and then try to help other people understand how powerful and magical they are too. Instead of sitting here on YouTube and being like, oh my God, all these people suck and where's the RV and where are the white hats and pointing fingers of blame and vigilante and I hate Trump because he hasn't saved us. Honey, it's not Trump's responsibility to save you. It's your responsibility to save you. You can do that. But if you do that, you're going negative. That's selfish. Or you can sit here and say, you know what? I picked a really interesting time to come to earth. And I know that every soul on planet Earth right now is a high priority soul because new souls could handle this. We know that. So every human here is here on purpose. We're here to human. And so I can take this opportunity of, of living on Earth at this very interesting time where there's so many triggers and there's so many crazy things going on. I can use this as the resistance that I need to grow as a person, to become more compassionate, to become more empathetic. It's like what Mr. Fox says when um, the bad guys, the controllers, the brothers of dark darkness get crazier and do crazier things. Instead of pouting and crying about it, we can say, OK, well, I'm going to counter that with being kinder, with being kinder to my neighbors, with making sure my family and friends are OK. You know, I know like we talked about that with Shanti in, in Mornay in South Africa. They're having load shedding and it's very cold right now in South Africa. And so they're shutting their power off for like eight hours a day in the cold. Well, yeah, that's fucked up. It's absolutely fucked up and people should petition that. But in the meantime, while you're pe petitioning that, while you're, you're protesting and rebelling against that, you can also take that opportunity to become an even better human by going to your neighbor's house. Are they okay? Do they have enough blankets? Do they have enough food? Do you, if you have an elderly neighbor that doesn't know how to start a fire, can you go in there and start that fire for her or him? Do you see what I'm saying? The choice is yours. There's so much within our world that we can't control. 
me as a singular person, I cannot control what goes on in the greater whole. All I can control is me. I can control how I react to that. And by controlling how I react to bad things happening in the world means that I'm not going to react in vigilante violence, but I'm going to react by law and order. I'm going to protest. I'm going to do everything I can to resist the evil in the world. But in the meantime, I'm going to use that uncomfortableness to also make myself a better human being. It's your choice. That's third density. You get to choose. And your choices, there's going to be a karmic, karmic effect on those choices. Because once we get to fourth density, we split. Third density is the last stop in polarity. Third density is the last stop where there's a good and a bad on the same planet. Because once fourth density comes, it splits. It goes fourth density negative or fourth density positive. If you're sitting at home and you're pouting because no, selfishly, like an arrogant little piece of shit, that no one's come to save you. I mean, literally, I mean, let's think about how narcissistic and selfish that is. These people expect Trump to come in and save them. Trump has his own family to save. You're not his responsibility. Get off of your high horse. Get off of the throne that you've put yourself on and save yourself. You need to say, is Trump is saving himself right now. Honey, listen, he's got enough on his plate. He can't worry about you. He's got to take care of himself and his own family, his own children, his own grandchildren. Your responsibility is to take care of your family, yourself, your children, your grandchildren. And if you're sitting at home having a pity party because somebody didn't sacrifice or martyr themselves for you, and that's the choices that you're going with to be in that energy field. You're going for density negative. The choice is yours. Or you can take this opportunity to refine yourself. To be the hero that you're waiting for. All right, let's get back to it. So let me, um, let's see. Let's, let's, uh, sh let's start this again. We who have being in cycles beyond thee are those who first came forth from the source and have in the passage through time and space gained ability to use the law of the greater that are far beyond the conceptions of man. Nothing there is that is really below thee, but only a different operation of law. Look thee above and look thee below. The same shall ye find for all is but part of the oneness that is the source of law. The consciousness below thee is part of thine own, as we are a part of thine. Ye as a child had not the knowledge that came to ye when ye became a man. Compare ye the cycles to man in his journey from birth unto death, and see in the cycles below thee the child with the knowledge he has. And see yourself as a child grown older, advancing in knowledge as time passes on. See ye, we also the child grown to manhood with the knowledge and wisdom that comes from the years. So also, O Thoth, are the cycles of consciousness, children in different stages of growth, yet all from the source, the wisdom that all the wisdom returns again, the law of one, right? So second density is animal life. Third density is human life. Just because second density is not the density of third density does not mean that second density is less important. You know, to eat animals, it's a fourth density negative choice. To make a second density animal suffer for your own nourishment is a negative choice you're making, right? Because it's suffering, it's inflicting suffering on another living being. And they're not any less valuable than you are. Is your second grader any less valuable than your fourth grader? Of course not. They're just in second grade and your fourth grader is in fourth grade. They're equally valuable. So see those animals as equally valuable to you. Just because their second density means nothing. Again, is your second grader less important than your fourth grader? All right. Cease then he from speaking and sat in silence that comes to the Lord's. Then again, he spake unto me saying, O Thoth, long we have sat in the mente, guarding the flame of life in the halls. The flame of life is your soul. Yet no, we are still part of our, our cycles with our vision reaching into them and beyond. I know that of all, nothing else matters except the growth we can gain with our soul. Boom. I know that we of all, 
Nothing else matters except the growth we can gain with our soul. Your story doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who your parents were. It doesn't matter what kind of person you think you are in this life. That's the ego. What matters is the growth of your soul. Know ye the flesh is fleeting. Death be not proud. The flesh is fleeting. The things men count great are nothing to us. The things we seek are not of the body, but are only the perfect state of the soul. When ye as men can learn that nothing but progress of the soul can count in the end, then truly ye are free of all bondage, free to work in the harmony of law. That's what the Yoga Sutras say too. Once you realize, once you freaking realize that you are not this life, this life is just a, a blink of an experience for your soul and you start to focus more on your soul versus your ego, then you're free because this body is going to die one day. It's going to die one day. That's, that's the law of nature. The soul doesn't care that the body's good. It's just like when you go to the, the amusement park and the, the ride is over. And you you might be like, oh, wow, that was a fun ride. I'm sad it's over. But you get off and you go to the next ride. No, you, you don't even think about it. So you're, that's how your soul is. It's your mind. It's the false sense of self. It's the ego that is attached to the mortality of the body. The body is not the soul. There are a lot of people I've noticed that don't understand this. Your body, Bryce, my identity in this life is not my soul. It's just the expression of my soul in this life. Once it's over, once the ride is over, my soul will get off and will get on the next ride. Just like you change clothes every day. You're not, you know, you wore something yesterday and you're wearing something else today. Were you emotional when you took off your clothes yesterday? Were you in mourning when you put those clothes in the dirty clothes hamper? No, you just did it. That's how your soul sees your life. So don't get confused. Because being confused, thinking that your body is your eternity, is what creates your suffering, according to the Yoga Sutra. So, all right. Know ye, O man, you should aim at perfection, for only thus can we attain the goal. Though ye should know that nothing is perfect, yet it should be thy aim and thy goal. Cease again the voice of the nine, and into my consciousness the words have sunk. Now seek I ever more wisdom, that I may be perfect in law with all. Soon go I down to the halls of Amente to live neath the cold flower of life. Flower of life is also the solar plexus. That's why I'm pointing to the solar plexus. Yet whom have I taught shall never more see me. Yet live I forever, forever in the wisdom I taught. All that man is is because of his wisdom. All that he shall be is the result of his cause. List ye now to my voice and become greater than common man. Lift thine eyes upward. Let light fill thy being. Be thou ever children of light. Only by effort shall ye go grow upward to the plane where light is the all of all. But ye the masters of all that surrounds these. Never be mastered by the effects, the effects of thy life. Create then ever more perfect cause. And in time shalt thou be the sun of the light. Free, let thine soul soar ever upward, free from the bondage and fetters of night. Lift thine eyes to the sun in the sky space. For thee, let it be the symbol of life. Know that thou art the great life, perfect in thine own sphere. When thou art free, look not ever into the blackness. Lift up thine eyes to the space above. Free, let thine light flame upward, and thou shalt be a children of the light. It's only through the effort you put forth into healing yourself that allows you to ascend. It's not somebody else doing it for you. All right, you guys, we are going to now look at a quick. Doriel doesn't have a very long commentary on this work, so it's going to be very quick. But before we get into Doriel's commentary, I do want to take a moment to give a special shout out to our sponsors of this channel, ASEA. I do hope you guys understand, speaking of selfishness, I hope you understand that without ASEA, ASEA is the reason why you get to watch these videos for free. Um, they are literally the ones that are paying for you to be able to watch this for free without having to pay for any type of information for my deep dives. And so I, have, I am eternally grateful to ASEA for giving me the flexibility to put this out for free. And so with that being said, here is a quick word from ASEA. My uncle Dan used to talk about QTR. 
QTR meant for him quality time remaining. My Uncle Dan was a very active cyclist and a very avid hiker. And after he retired after a long career, he decided that he really wanted to make the most of the years he had left where there was quality to his life before the aging process really limited his ability to enjoy things like cycling and hiking. Unfortunately, my Uncle Dan did lose his battle to cancer back in 2019, but when I was first introduced to the ASEA product, all I kept thinking about was my Uncle Dan and his concoction post-retirement of quality time remaining. As human beings, we've been taught that as our body starts to age, we eventually have to start giving up some of the activities that we enjoyed. For my uncle, that was cycling and hiking. With the ASEA supplement, what this product does is it restores signaling back into the body. Signaling, our communication between the cells of the body, is what actually allows the aging process to happen. Your body is designed by nature, by God, whatever you want to call that higher consciousness, it's designed to heal itself. That's why the cells communicate. That's why you have an immune system. But unfortunately, as we become conditioned to the toxins of this world, that immune system and that signaling system start to wear down. When our body loses signaling, that's what causes wrinkles. That's what causes cellulite. That's what causes the hair to gray. And for men, that's potentially what causes hair loss. As Dr. Silverman has used as an example, when we are a child and we fall off of our bicycle and skin our knees, our recovery time is pretty quick. This is because we have an abundance of redox or signaling in our bodies. But after puberty and into our adulthood, we rapidly start to lose this signaling. So if we were to fall off a bike at 80, that could mean life or death. Now for me, since I've been on the SIA now for about three months, I have noticed a tremendous amount of energy and endurance restored back to my life. As you guys all know, I am an avid exerciser. I truly believe in the power of a good sweat. And since starting the ASEA, I have noticed that my recovery time between workouts and my endurance within workouts has enhanced immensely. I'm able to go longer and harder. I've also noticed, as many of you guys have commented in the comment section, I feel like I'm getting younger or at least looking younger. No, my age keeps going up, but I look back and compare my videos now to the videos I did when I first started YouTube and I feel like I look younger now than I did then. And I do have to say that is most likely because of the ASEA. When I talked to my mother about this product, I mentioned the quality time remaining that my uncle Dan used to speak of and how with the ASEA for her as a grandmother, this product can give her her the potential to have a lot longer quality time of playing in the backyard with her grandchildren. In fact, so many amazing, incredible stories can be found in comment sections of this video and on ASEA's own YouTube channel, which I will place down in the description box below. Now, we can't make any medical claims with this product as it is just a supplement. But from my perspective and from all of the um, perspectives and experiences I've read from you guys, this product has done nothing but enhance every single person's life every single person's quality time remaining, whether that be 50 years or 10 years. We see a lot of people talk about med beds, this idea of med beds. Everybody's waiting for a med bed, but what if I told you, in my opinion, the med bed is already here. 
with the ASEA, what it comes with, each liquid, it's a liquid, each liquid comes with its own shot glass. The shot glass is about two ounces. Each person is instructed to take between four and eight ounces a day. You take a little shot of the ASEA, you swish it around for 30 to 60 seconds so that you allow the saliva to carry the redox where it wants to carry it, and then you swallow the rest. The redox is so genius, and the creators of this product are so genius that in my opinion, they really, really honored and respected God's design. Because you see, when you take the liquid redox, you are allowing your body its own intelligence. Because the redox is just a tool. It's just the signaling for your cells. Your cells, your body is designed to heal itself. And this is what helps the body to continue to heal itself. And so when you take the liquid, your body knows exactly where it needs to send the redox, what part of your body is wounded, what part of your body isn't so stable. And so it sends the redox to that particular area so the cells in that area can start to communicate to get that particular area of the body back to where it needs to be. Now, of course, with this redox gel, you are able to direct the gel wherever you want it to go. So today I woke up and had a little bit of a creak in my neck. So I took the redox gel and I rubbed it on the back of my neck three times within five minutes. I personally, in my experience, automatically started to feel relief. You can also use this as a beauty supplement too. I've been using the gel on my thighs and on my boobs because yes friends i am 40 years old and as as the aging process does occur the body starts to droop a little bit and no i've never had children so my boobs aren't as droopy as they could be if i had to use them to feed a child but they still are you know i got boobs and they 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 are, they're starting to sink a little bit. I also have stretch marks on my boobs that I've had my whole life because, you know, they grew at some point when I was a child. So I've been taking the gel and putting them on my chest. And not only have I noticed a difference, but my boyfriend has also noticed a different difference as well. My boyfriend has been putting the gel on his head. As he is in his 50s now, he has started to notice thinning of the hair, as most men do around that age in their lives. And he is starting to grow his hair back which is quite incredible. In fact, I find myself now when I walk past him putting my hand in his hair just to feel all the hair that's growing back on his head. You see, my friends, your body doesn't want to fail you. It wants to keep you going. It wants to keep you healthy. That is how God designed it. And this product is basically the controllers of this world's worst nightmare. Now, once again, I can't make any medical claims because this product is just a supplement. But from everything I have researched about this product, from all of the people using this product, you really can't go wrong with this product. And because this product uses the intelligence of your body, each individual person is going to start to notice different things occurring with this product. If you are interested in learning more about this product or purchasing this product, product or even becoming a part of the business of ASEA, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047 and J or Hillis will get back to you as soon as possible. If you are texting from a country outside of the United States, please make sure that you add plus one. 321-216-8047 plus one is our country code. And in your text, on top of texting Bryce info, just make sure you let Jay or Hillis know that you are texting from a country outside of the United States so they can arrange a call with you on WhatsApp or Signal or Zoom, any application that's not gonna charge you. With that being said, another amazing thing about the SEA company is that they do offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So if this product doesn't work for you or isn't what you expected after the first 30 days, they will refund you. All right, back to our show. All right, now let's look very quickly at Doriel's commentary. Thoth tells men of his time about the ages they and their ancestors have known him, and this alone should have been enough to make them realize his power. 
He reminds them that he has been the keeper of the mysteries of the past ages and has brought them from the savagery to light. He tells them that he is now going to reveal some of the elder mysteries revealed to him and his ancestors by the children of light and the lords of the cycles. Thoth tells them how a way may be formed to open the gateway to the halls of Amente, drawing a line and a geometrical angle from the Sphinx, the key to the opening, the secret chamber beneath the pyramid may be found. And again, I see this as being more internal than external. The cycles Thoth speaks of are the cosmic cycles from the positive side of this arc and the negative side of the other arc towards which we are moving. So we're moving in a negative direction and it's us, it's up to us to course correct, bring the consciousness of earth back to the positive side because we are moving in a negative direction. The negative side of this and the positive side of the other each have 14 cosmic cycles. The lords of the cycles are of the center of all of each cosmic consciousness. They know the eventual perfection of all. So that again connects to the seven chakras within the human being. For the first time, Thoth mentions the lords from below, the lower cosmic cycles. Each cosmic consciousness thus has its representative in all cosmic cycles. Thoth is told by the Lord of Nine that though he is great and on with the cosmic consciousness, there are mysteries of which he has yet does not know. Thoth is told that though he knows much, yet hidden within each cosmic consciousness are things he will not fully know until all become one, because we're not in the density of knowing. The expansion of each consciousness is different for each is performing a different part of the infinite plan. Each supplements the other so that the growth of each one reacts upon the other. One is just as necessary as the other, though. Some can perform greater tasks. There is no real above or below for there are comparative terms. Yeah, it's different densities, right? We see it in linear. Like that goes back to the, the last tablet, the, the tablet of time, where we see things in linear. And so that's how they're described to us in linear. But it's all different, different kind of dimensions of density, if that makes sense. This is there's no real above or below for these are comparative terms. The cosmic consciousness are the means through which the torchbearer changes disorder and chaos to order and law. You're the torchbearer, my friend. You're the one that can change disorder and chaos to order and law. You're the alchemist. You're it. You're the magic. Each works in its own space of filling necessary functions, and the lower cosmic cycles is just as important in the great plan as the highest. The higher cosmic cycles are merely of merely of greater ability. All cosmic consciousness are one in the final analysis, just as all unites, just as all units of souls are one with the constant cosmic consciousness, which is the law of one. We're all part of the one. The difference in ability of the higher and lower cosmic consciousness is compared to the boy and the man. Thoth is truly giving an example of the uh, microcosm and the macrocosm as above, so below the macro and the micro, which we've seen throughout this whole reading again. The lords through manifestation and amente are yet connected and part of their own cosmic cycle. Their purpose in manifesting in cosmic cycles other than their own is for the purpose of aiding certain growths in the soul of man and transmuting the results of their own cosmic consciousness, thus laying the foundation for the quality of the disorder allowed to flow to each cosmic cycle. Perfection would be the goal, though we should always realize that perfection is receding in direct proportion to our own growth. What today seems perfection, tomorrow will be in perfection, for we know that perfection is not yet realized even in the torch bearer. Thoth says that even now, as he goes to Amente, yet will live he with them in the truth he is taught, almost the same as the sayings of Jesus. Well, we know from st studies that Thoth most likely was a teacher of Yeshua, not Jesus was in his real name, Yeshua. He gives the injunctions from them to turn all effort towards becoming one with the light. Thoth concludes the tablet with the command to lift their eyes to the sun and break free of darkness. All right, you guys, that was a powerful tablet. Uh, let me know your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below. And please do not forget to join us at 10 o'clock this morning, Eastern time on Aquarius Rising Africa for a live show where we're going to go through that all again live and have a group conversation about the material. All right, you guys, I'll see you soon. Have a great day.